said uh, that cancer is uh, the cause of death, the second global cause of uh, death in, in the whole world. Now, which also brings a lot of attention on what is being done when it comes to cancer prevention, uh, uh, advocates against uh, cancer and all that is related. Now, in the studio, I'm joined by uh, Susan Henshaw, who's the CEO of uh, City Cancer Challenge. Uh, Susan, you're very welcome in our studios. Thank you so much for having me, Friday. It's a pleasure. Now, tell us, what is City Cancer Challenge for someone who is hearing this for the very first time? Well, it's an excellent start to the, to the question, and I, I I want to take the opportunity, though, if you let me, to thank the government of Rwanda for supporting us in our partnership as City Cancer Challenge here um, with the City of Kigali and the Ministry of Health. Um, so City Cancer Challenge is a global initiative. It works with cities around the world to support them in their work um, to progress towards delivering equitable and quality cancer care for all. Our major um, work is to partner with cities like Kigali and to support them through an assessment of their needs in terms of cancer treatment and care and then provide um, additional catalyzing support where we can um, help them with uh, prioritizing those needs and moving towards implementation. All right, so where was City Council Challenge birthed and what other cities did you expand to? Um, well, we actually started with the global organisation, the convener behind World Cancer Day, in fact, the Union for International Cancer Control, which is based in Geneva. They're a membership organisation. And they told us that the members around the world were really looking for pragmatic and practical solutions to cancer on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was birthed in UICC. We were launched in 2017 at the World Economic Forum in, in Davos, and we became a standalone foundation in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we're working across the world. We have cities in Latin America, in Asia, in Europe, and in Africa, um, we have Kumasi in Ghana, and obviously Kigali here mm. in Rwanda. So you're basically working with two cities in, in Africa, being uh, Kumasi and Kigali. Exactly. Now, now um, what, what are the criteria for you to decide to, you know, going in, in a particular city, why not Nairobi or different other cities in the southern part of Africa? Well, in fact, today we launched the um, start of a new global call for cities. Um, and so in October this year, cities around the world will be able to apply mm -hmm. to become a City Cancer Challenge city. Um, and the type of uh, criteria that we're really looking for is cities to become ready for this type of initiative. So cities that have uh, the political will mm. and the support behind them. They have a strong civil society um, and they have really that, uh, I think, that expectation and that commitment to come together with all the different sectors and work together in partnership. Mm -hmm. Now, Rwanda has made strides when it comes to um, cancer diagnosis and also treatment, you know, with this, by installing different uh, medical facilities and also different um, institutions that help in the prevention and also uh, in the treatment of cancer. And today, the, the, the Rwanda uh, Cancer Center was, was, was unveiled, which will basically be treating cancer patients using radiotherapy. Now, when you look at the strides Rwanda is making towards cancer treatment, how would you rate that and how does it fall in your mandate? Well, I think today was a very special occasion um, and it was a privilege to be part of the event today. Um, what was extraordinary um, from, a, from, a, from a, both a local, a regional and a global perspective is His Excellency President Kagame saying outright and his support for health and cancer in particular. Um, and I think the Minister of Health, Dr. Gashumba, really brought home the need for that level of integration. So, so many things have happened in the last few years here in Rwanda, radiotherapy, access to chemotherapy, access to surgery. Now I think that the, the next phase is really strengthening and bringing together um, those in a, in a complementary and integrated fashion. Mm -hmm. Now as we conclude this interview, 
besides Rwanda that is making strides, there's different other African cities, and not just Africa, but also uh, some parts of Asia that are still struggling when it comes to awareness, mm -hmm. uh, by mm -hmm. simple fact of awareness of, of cancer and different ways that it can develop in, in, in a person. Um, maybe this is not so much in your mandate, but how do you uh, go about um, I, I want to mention the word awareness, but also help institutions present in, yeah. in particular countries to be able to, to, to roll out plans, to also be aware of the need in their communities. Absolutely, and awareness is key. And I don't think it matters if you know, it's not the specific mandate of any cancer organisation, but I think we have a responsibility wherever we can to increase awareness. Um, one of the ways that we do it through City Cancer Challenge is through mobilising um, the City Executive Committee in right. Kigali. Uh, this is a group of decision makers who come together and act as the stewards. And they are already mobilising and building awareness. So um, they have mobilised themselves, 126 health professionals across Kigali. 80 patients, 32 institutions, and all of those conversations have a multiplying effect mm -hmm. so that the awareness grows. All right, now as we move out, uh, what motto or slogan do you usually have against cancer? I mean, during in your daily work, when you're going about, you know, making sure different institutions are stronger, yes. what's your motto, what's your slogan when it comes to eradicating or fighting cancer? Invest in people. Investing people is the key word. Investing people. Thank you so much, Dr. Susan, for your time Thank and you being so with much. us during this interview. Thank you.